At a recent show I went to, I overheard a conversation between two people of the public asking about a Belgian Malinois, seemingly interested in possibly owning one. The owner of the Malinois, however, was not too keen on letting information about their breed. The owner was an owner as well as a breeder and described the Mal in the worst way possible, saying things about how no one in the public would get their breed's behavior and requirements, and even suggested that they instead go after another, more manageable breed. Now I may not be an expert in Malinois in particular, but I knew what the Malinois person said, while true, was made to sound much worse than Malinois really are. I've worked with them before, and while the information may be true, they aren't as impossible to handle as the breeder made it seem. The public people seemed really into and sounded like they knew what they were getting into when working with a Malinois. I could tell this breeder was a gatekeeper. This got me thinking about gatekeeping in dog breeds, and why it's such a problem that gatekeeping is the reason your precious breeds in the dog world in general will go down before long. Let's take a look. So what is gatekeeping? In simple terms, gatekeeping is a term used by the various members of the purebred community to talk about keeping their breed from public eyes. Or in other words, not allowing their dogs into the general public's hands. Some breeds are far worse than others, looking at you Malinois and English Foxhound people, but almost ev every breed has at least some gatekeeping members. Gatekeeping to keep a breed from public eye is one reason that I believe pure breeds are going downhill as no one can get close to members of a breed or even get to the breed they are interested in at all. It's very frustrating for potential owners and enthusiasts to be turned down by this. Now the argument for gatekeeping is that you don't know if a member of the general public is well-meaning. And truthfully, all it takes is one person who seems wholehearted to bring the entire breed to its hawks, flooding the market with fad designer dog crosses or just making puppies for the fun of it. Most general public don't know pet home dogs are sold as pet home dogs because they don't have the structure, temperament, or ability to be bred. It's selective breeding, but if one person feels like they can breed their pet dog for the fun of it, very quickly can the breed bar be brought down over the course of generations. And don't get me wrong, there are certainly some breeds under gate kept that should be more gate kept due to the history of the breed. There are certainly some breeds out there which definitely do not belong in public hands. Caucasian or Charvicas are one breed, and there's dozens more I can think of, but a breed like, say the Husky? Pfft, it's a freaking Husky. Like, seriously. Yes, there are definitely some breeds that no matter how much a person is willing, or even does, change, exercise, train, whatever, that dog, it will never fit in. This could be due to temperament, the ways that they work, whatever it is. There are breeds like that that just will not work with domestic life. That kind of gatekeeping I can understand to an extent, but that's a small fraction of breeds out there, and even still, it doesn't mean you can't educate new people into your breed to explain behaviors. Most breeds can and do settle well into a domestic life. I mean, come on, a freaking husky is a freaking husky. It's not going to maul an entire city just because it's not exercise 24-7. Same thing with you Australian shepherd people. My Aussie isn't going to tear down my house just because I don't take it for a walk every 15 seconds. It's not even about gatekeeping anymore when you really get down to it. It's just toxic people in general. It crushes new folks who want to get in the breed and all they get is hazing. New owner handlers getting made fun of saying that their dog is a pile of garbage and backyard bread certainly doesn't help newbies. I know people have completely dropped out of certain breeds because of their toxic communities. That's how awful it can be. But then, all you complain about why your breed is super low in numbers and why it gets so much flack. You toxic members thinking you're helping by keeping the breed limited isn't. Toxic members are one reason why I've actually completely shied away from Belgian Terverons. I wanted to learn more about them, but the moment I ask questions relating to them, I get blown off. To anyone who would answer me, they would also make the dog sound like the most impossible thing to own. I grew up with a neighbor who had them. I trained one for search and rescue. I know this breed and its history and its requirements, but I still get flack. Sometimes I hear people tell me that if I'm curious in a certain breed to not even bother because people are so gatekeeping and toxic. Saying that hurts. 
to not even try, that's just begging for a negative perception. Come back to me when you get serious. Ha ha, good luck. You will never be ready. Are just a few things I've heard firsthand in breeds. And had I not known other more welcoming people into said breeds, I would be turned down to think everyone is like that in that breed and never get into it. Yes, you care about your breed, but denying every single member outside of your breed and not welcoming new people into it is going to make your breed go extinct before long and just leave a negative taste in the mouth of the public. And ultimately, it's going to make the public hate your breed and anyone within it. Think about it, if you and everyone in said breed is rude, snobby, and downright toxic to anyone who's interested in it, what's gonna happen? You won't get new people into your breed. You'll leave a bad impression on not just you, but your whole breed. Then, you very same rude and toxic people complain about why your breed is top in the endangered breeds list, which is such irony, I love it. It makes me laugh my tail off at this. And at that rate, it's like you're asking for no one to come into your breed. But then what happens when all of you who have been in the breed age out and have no one to pick up where you left off? No one will be in the breed, and the breed will die. Let some in. Give them a chance. Just because the owner doesn't work from home 24-7, have a 10-foot fenced-in yard, lives alone on a ranch 20 miles from the closest other human, and trains the dog 18 hours a day, doesn't mean I can't own a Malinois. I'm picking on Malinois because they tend to be the most egregious from my experience. If you don't welcome new people to your breed, you're not helping it. You're actively hurting it. You're making it worse than backyard breeders and puppy mills could ever hope to. You're denying people who go out of their way to find well-bred dogs. Of course if they get turned down by you for all that effort in tracking down a good ethical breeder, of course they're gonna go for the easier and probably much cheaper and nicer to meet and talk to backyard breeder. Then you'll complain that they never came to you when they really did and you denied them a chance at a well-bred dog. This is one reason why everyone goes for backyard bread and mill dogs. They're just so much easier to find because gatekeepy people don't let those who actively look for well-bred dogs in, thinking they're gonna ruin it. Quick note here, I know some people are going to tell me that another reason the general public goes after mill and backyard bred dogs is because good breeders don't have many puppies at any given time. And true, well-meaning breeders only have one to two, maybe three litters a year, but that doesn't explain why people can't put themselves on a waiting list. And for common breeds like German Shepherd Dogs and Labrador Retrievers, there's enough breeders in most areas to warrant contacting multiple breeders to be put on a waiting list and having to wait less. Yes, the general public tends to be impatient and don't want to wait for a puppy, but there are those who seek out good breeders should know that they will most likely have to wait, at wait possibly several months for a puppy, and those that seek out well-bred puppies probably already know that. Personally, if I think if someone had the effort and ability to seek out and look for a well-meaning breeder, they want a healthy dog and a reputable breeder. It takes effort to find a good breeder who does everything. If they had the patience to seek you out, I think that's proving a lot already that they really care. The average public doesn't know that much, but what's stopping you from educating them? The person who seeked you out has to be well-meaning if they're willing to wait five years to go through all your hoops and drop 2k on a well-bred puppy. Another quick note here, it's not just dogs. Almost any animal with breeds have toxic communities, some even worse. Cats, horses, livestock, reptiles, rabbits. All of them can have awful communities who haze new people. I'm just using dogs because they're the most well-known to the general public, and the ones I'm most familiar with. It also doesn't help that gate-kept breeders selling to pet homes have to make everything stupidly specific and nigh impossible to achieve if you're an average person. Yes, any well-meaning breeder has high standards for pet homes because they care about where each and every dog they make ends up, but those high standards are why some people get both bad impressions and seek out puppy mills and backyard breeders for less restrictions. I'm sure they know that you mean best when applying for a puppy, hence the heavy questioning, but you can't tell a potential Whippet owner they need an 8-foot wooden fenced-in yard and expect them to install one if they don't already have one or they can't have a Whippet. But I also understand this isn't just an issue for breeders. I'm looking at you, rescues. Another video on that coming soon. And it's not even just when it comes to pet homes. I want to help show breeds, but you deny me a chance. What if I just want to show a dog because I think it's fun? I don't intend to breed them, I'll let you do that. I just want to show it. 
but you don't let me in that stupid gate, thinking I'm going to bring the breed down. I understand some gatekeeping is needed to make sure that the market isn't flooded with watered-down, poorly bred dogs of your breed, but then breed members can't act like you aren't good enough to be a part of this unless you can prove you know every little single thing and jump through every hoop I expect you to, and then immediately get upset and angry because your breed is top 5 in the most endangered breeds list. You can't be toxic, then get upset that no one's in your breed. It's complete irony. Certain clubs out there also certainly don't help this. Looking at you, Poodle Club of America. Side note here, I blame snobby poodle people for the reason doodles and designer mutts are becoming more common, and it frustrates me to no end as a dog groomer. In fact, I'd say gatekeeping is one reason why pure breeds are on the decline, as well as why people go out and look for or more welcoming alternatives, i.e. puppy mills, backyard breeders, rescues, doodles, whatever. In a world in sport which already has so much negative perception and publicity due to series like Pedigree Dogs Exposed, gatekeeping is only making it worse. And before long, the people who are so anxious about keeping their breed healthy and positive are going to lead to its downfall. Not just their breed, but all breeds. We need to stop this if we want a future for our dogs. So what can you do about it? Show your breed pride. Let some people have a chance. Let people get information on their breed and welcome new enthusiastic members. Yes, in doing this, you may unintentionally let your breed slip, and I'm in no way saying puppy mills and backyard breeders are good, not by a long shot, but I personally think letting that enthusiastic new person who had the ability and time and patience to seek out a good breeder get into the breed is worth the risk. If it means getting the breed more well-known and showing the general public the dog world is not what everyone says it is. Do one quick Google search for problems with pure breeds and all you get are reputable sources with their false information having people believe them because they're more welcoming. As for you toxic members, if you don't want to change your attitude about new people, that's fine. But don't come complaining to me when your breed only has 60 dogs left in the world. Our world is already dying as we speak, with rescue spreading lines and anti-breeder fur mommies, if we don't change our way and show positive in our breeds and sports, we will be the reason that we die.